Hi friends, welcome to Offer Studies YouTube channel. This is part 40 in Azure Databricks Real-Time Scenarios playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how we can work with the REST API which has token-based authentication in Azure Data Factory. So firstly, I hope everyone knows what is REST API. REST API means like think like one URL will be there. For that URL, you will send a request and then in return you will get a response. So response you will be getting you will be sending a request. So usually while sending a request, you may send some request body in JSON format and you may get a response back in JSON format. It can be Excel format as well, but nowadays everything will be JSON driven. Okay. So in 90% in of the cases, you will be seeing J JSON request will be sent and JSON re response may come back. So in this process, when you are doing this uh, request and response using a API call, sometimes what you need to do is you need to supply a token token means think like one password or one key so first you need to make a api call let's assume that is called api1 and then get a token here so you need to get a token using making that api call and once you get this token and then you need to make another api call let's say api2 and then get the data so when you are making this second api call here you need to pass this token right so this is called a token based authentication make one api call get the token and then once the token is back pass that token to the actual api to get the data so how to do that this is what we are going to discuss in this video so to explain this what i did is i have found one useful website called this appsolvedworld.com so in this website right i will provide the link of this website in the video description as well so they have a, a sample api this is the base url of the api and on top of this url you need to append this relative URL, maybe API slash auth account slash registration to register a user. Then this is to login a user. And once the registration of the user and the user login completed, then you can make these API calls either to get the user's information or to get any specific user information or maybe to update a user or to delete a user and everything. So when you firstly, you need to perform the registration of the user and then perform the login of the user so once you perform the login you will get a token here using that token you can make all these api calls so we will take this api for our demo actually so if i scroll down as i said first user registration api they have beautifully explained here if you see here when you are making a user re registration api call using this url you need to supply this in the request body you, you need to supply what is the name of the user what is the email address what is the password for that user so you need to supply this information and once you supply this information if everything is good you will get a response saying like this that means success user registration is successful along with one token as well at the time of registration itself if if this user name or this email id already exists or someone used it for the registration then you will get this response back where it says this email address already registered okay so let's assume let's try to register a user first and then after that if you see this same page if you scroll down next you need to perform this api call to login so when you are logging in here in the registration api call you used a username and email address and password right the same information you need to use to login and if you see the request to body of the login see same same email address and password we have to pass in the request and then response will be getting like login was successful and it will give back this token so once this token is generated you can you need to take this token and this token you have to supply here see if, if i scroll down like this in the header of the request you have to supply your token value here under the authorization header then you, you need to make a call so if you make a call then you will get a like for example if you make a call to this api where users information of the first page will come you will get all this information all this users information will get back okay so and when you are trying to log in if you see the login api call when you are trying to log in with your credentials by making a api call if the login was not successful because of some reason then it will give you this response where it says invalid username and password to demonstrate that let's try to take this url where you will get a, all the users information and we need to make a get api call here right it is a get method so let's get method can be done directly from the user browser also right so let's try to do that see if i do that immediately it will say please supply the token in the authorization header because this api works with the token based authentication 
you need to get the token and the pass the token for it so let's try to do one thing let's try to create a user registration and login and then test that everything in the postman then implement that in the data factory so let me go to postman so postman is a tool you using which you can make a api calls actually right so i hope everyone knows if you don't know kindly uh, check it so let me uh, there will be a lot of tutorials in the online so i am going high level so i created a one new collection so new collection is nothing but like think like one folder so here i am creating a new request so let me go to create request or something one second somewhere see add request okay so here for this request uh, i can name it like maybe like user registration so this is all i am going to test first in the postman so let's go let's go to our api so for the user registration this is the url so let me take this url and let me paste it here and if you see it should be post method so i will change this method as a post method and then if you see for this request you need to supply the information of the user for which you are doing the registration so let me copy this request body and when before sending this request i need to supply that request body so for that go to body here and then here go to uh, one second raw and here i am going to supply request body in json format so select the json and paste it here so this is the request body i want to search so here maybe i will change this to maybe like uh, mahir123 okay and the email address also i will change to maybe mahir123 and password let it be 1234 so now let me send this request if this request is going to be successful if this email id is not there in the registration then you will get this response back saying your registration was successful okay so let me send this request here and if you wait for the results to appear here you can see it is success that means with this id and with this name and with this password a new registration happened so we are good now let's try to do the user logging where you will get a token back so to do the user logging this is the url to use and you need to supply the request body like email address and password what you used in the registration time so what i will be doing it here is let me add a new request here maybe add another request so this is like user login request right so user login request so why, why you need to create the we can't be edit the same request you can edit it just for a better organization or to organize the things better maybe to refer later i am doing this properly so here for the user login let me take the api url copy this and let's come back here and again it is a post request if you see here it is a post request and you need to supply the request body with the email id and password so let me go to request body here and to supply the JS bar request body in json select the raw and then select the format as json here and then pass it so here i need to use my user id and my password so if i go to user registration what is the email id i used here it is mahir32123 at the gmail.com right so let me go here so let me edit this here mahir123 at the red gmail.com and if you see the password is 123456 so let's the password is correct so now if i send this request it should log in successful and get the response back with the barrier token if you see the sample response it will be in this format and if you see there is a token property or a key available which contains your barrier token so let me send this request here let's wait for the response to come see I am getting a barrier token also. So now with this barrier token, if I make a API call to get the user's information as I shown in this page, you need to use this authorization header and then you need to make a API call for this, then you will get the user's data. So let me test that also here first. So let me try to create a another request here. Maybe here I will name this like maybe get users something and then let me take the URL of this so let me copy that url let me paste it here and this is a get request only so what we need to make sure is we need to make sure to pass the authorization header so as a barrier space token so what you need to do here is uh, go here go to headers and here you need to pass the authorization header so here okay go to authorization header and here for the authorization header you need to supply the barrier token so select the barrier token and you need to supply the barrier token value here right so let me go to this user login so here we got a barrier token right so let me copy this barrier token Control c let me go back here let me pass my token here and let me send this request now see now i am able to get the user's information properly so all this should happen from the azure data factory
so how to do that that is what we are going to see so now let's go to one thing let me go to azure data factory let me go to author menu let me create a new pipeline so first thing is we need to make a api call this user login api call and then pass your request body and get this response so that we can get a token right so first we need to do that so to do that let me copy this url and let me go to so in the azure data factory we have something called web activity as i shown in my adf playlist so this will help you to make a api calls so for this web activity under settings supply the url user login url and this is going to be post method right so select the post method and if you see we have to supply a request body so copy this request body and let me paste it here so in the request body i have a email and everything is set so let me debug execute this first and see whether this api call is getting successful and whether i am getting a barrier token back or not so let's wait for the execution to complete here so this is executed successful now if i go to output tab in the output json i can see token is coming back right so let me copy this entire output json into one notepad first let me go to notepad why i am copying this is in the next activity i need to write a expression which will try to take this token property value so under output json under data property under token property you have this barrier token value so let me go back here so maybe what i want to do is uh, so once you get a barrier token either you can make another api call using a web activity where you will pass the barrier token and get the information or for some reason if you want to copy that response into some json file into your blob storage or data lake storage then you can do that as well for now let's use a web activity here to make the second api call which will actually get you the user's information so if you see we have already tried this api call to get the user's information right so let me take this url from here and let me paste it here and if as it was a get request right if you see the postman it is a get request and under authorization i need to supply the barrier token so what i should do here under the headers i need to supply a uh, authorization a u t h o r z so spelling we have to make sure okay so authorization here i need to supply that barrier token so how to supply the barrier token if you have seen this code so under authorization you need to use barrier space token so let me copy these things from here so that we will not error out so let me paste this authorization here and then we need to use barrier then space token right so let me go here so let me open the dynamic expression so till barrier is fine after that space then from where i am getting the token value from the output json of the first web activity so under data property token property right so what i should do here right i need to use a dynamic expression so if you see the activity outputs this is a web one activity right first web activity so under the web web one activity output json go to data property and then go to token property see data property then token property right so let me hit okay now let me execute this and see whether we will be able to get make the web api call to get the users properly or not so first step will be this activity will run and get a barrier token and then that barrier token will be supplied into this api call where it is fetching the users information so let's wait for the execution to complete here great see execution completed successfully if i see the output json see i am getting all the users information data and everything the entire json i am getting properly right so that's how it works so in real time usually what people will be do they will not using a second api api call here they will use a copy activity because they want to send that response everything as a json file into them some storage or something so let's try to do that as well so it's the same thing whatever we did we have to do the same thing so we need to use a copy activity so once you get a barrier token use a copy activity in the copy activity under source you need to make a api call so for that you need to create a, a new data set which is rest type so let me select the rest type data set that means because this data set is going to make a rest api call and here let's try to create a new linked service for the rest and here we need to use a base url of the api and if you see the base url of the api is if you scroll up it is clearly listed here right take this entire base url copy this and then come here and paste it here then there is no authentication initially so let for the base url so select a anonymous authentication test the connection it should make a connection successful to this base url so let's wait for the test connection to happen here so it is successful let me hit this create button 
now let me hit ok button and if i open this rest data set whatever i created under the copy activity of the source let me open the data set once again here see here this is the base url to which we are making api call then what is the real uh, actual url that means relative url if you see here on top of this url we have to append slash api slash users question mark page one so that is what and you can see by scrolling down the same thing so if you see here after logging let me scroll down a little bit more and if you see here after the base url it should be slash api slash users question mark page equals to one let me copy this and then let me go to azure data factory and let me paste this under the relative url now let's go back to our pipeline so our source data set setting is done we no need to do anything but if you have closely observed what we did we only used the url in the api call but if you remember we need to supply this authorization barrier token as well right so for that what we need to do under the same source setting under the additional headers you need to use this plus new button and pass that header so let's go back here and let's try to copy that header name properly authorization let me go to my data factory and here i need to supply the barrier token so for that i need to use barrier then space token so let me copy that then barrier then space then my token is dynamically coming from the web activity one right so from the web activity output as i shown before under data property token property so let's go here output dot data property then token property okay now let me hit okay so what this is going to do this is going to make a api call and get all that json then all that json i want to store on my data lake storage gen 2 as a json file maybe so what i will be doing it here is maybe i will be creating a new data set pointing to my data lake storage gen 2 and then this is going to be a json file which i want to save and this is the uh, linked service for my storage account so in my storage account if i show you that storage account which is adls my here uh, i have a container called sample container so let me go to containers and then let me go to sample containers so here i have a container called uh, sample container and i have a container called uh, uh, sorry folder called output and data right so maybe under output folder i want to save let's assume so what i will be doing i will be browsing the location here so under sample container under output folder i want to save so let me hit ok here i am not selecting any file name here so don't import any schema because the file is not there simply click ok so it created a data set which is pointing to output folder with a json format so if you want to make sure ki that json file should have some name so you can give something so i will be giving like users.json this is the file with which the name should be so i can type that name whatever i want okay so now let's go back here now if i execute this entire pipeline what it will be doing is it will first make the api call of the logging and get the token and then go to the copy activity in the copy activity it will go to the source it will make the actual api call to get the data and while making this api call it will supply the barrier token automatically in a dynamic fashion and then whatever the json response came back that will get stored into the sync location and sync location is pointing to data lake storage gen 2 output folder as a json format so see my pipeline execution is successful i can see the green tick marks here so everything went fine now if i go to my storage account and if i go to output folder i should see as users.json file now if i go inside that users.json file and if i go to edit i can see see the entire data came so that's how you can make a api calls with a barrier tokens and you may be wondering you you have seen in the url page one that means page two page three page four so there are a lot of api calls we can make for each page and get certain set of users from it right so if you want to make sure that is called pagination actually so if you want to make the api calls which has a pagination implemented then there is one video which is already created which is already created by me if i if you go to youtube and then if you go to if you search in the youtube like pagination in adf something then you will see this see pagination in adf if you search it in the starting so this video you have to watch it okay not only that you can handle the pagination inside the copy activity itself i will do a separate video for that in our upcoming videos okay so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much